Throughout my life, I've increasingly found that reading scripture together in public isn't just about feeding our own spirits and minds. It's about rehearsing the mighty acts of God for God's glory. So now let's think together about Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And first, let's have some tea. Jesus said, You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how is it going to get salty again? It's no good for anything. You might as well throw it out and walk all over it. This is both a vocational saying and a warning. It's part of the Sermon on the Mount. Indeed, in a sense, it's one of the early climaxes in the Sermon on the Mount. People have often read the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 as though it's just Jesus' blueprint for how to live a good life. It's much sharper than that. Jesus is addressing his Jewish compatriots right then and there in the 30s or late 20s of the first century and saying, don't you realize who you as God's people are called to be? It's a wonderful vocation, but if you forget it, if you go wrong on it, then what's the whole point of being Israel in the first place if you're not going to be the salt of the earth? Again and again, Jesus' challenge to his contemporaries goes back to those great promises in Scripture, like in Isaiah, where the prophet says that, that God has called Israel to be uh, the light of the nations and called the servant, who is both Israel and one who stands over against Israel, to bring God's light into the dark places of the wider world. But what happens with that vocation, and Jesus goes on to use that same image in the next verse, you're the light of the world, is that so many in Jesus' day were so aware of being oppressed by pagan nations that all they wanted to do was not to cast God's light upon the world, but to be the instruments of God's judgment on the world. And Jesus is saying, no, you're the salt of the earth. Salt is the image for, in the ancient world particularly, preserving food that needs to be kept fresh and ready for subsequent use. And so Jesus is using that image as a way of saying to his compatriots, you are the people through whom God was supposed to be blessing the nations. But what happens if you forget that vocation? And Jesus is constantly warning in the Sermon on the Mount and throughout the Gospels that many, many of his contemporaries were indeed forgetting that vocation, were going their own way, were not paying heed to the people that they were supposed to be. And so he says, watch out, if the salt becomes tasteless, how is it going to get salty again? You can't just suddenly say, oh, well, let's go back to doing our job again. No, if you're not careful, judgment is going to fall. And once that happens, then that vocation has, is gone forever. And this fits with the other warnings we find, particularly in Matthew's gospel. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the warning about the house which is built on sand, and because it doesn't have a foundation on the rock, when the wind and the storm come, that house is going to be blown away. A house, of course, being an echo in the Jewish world of the temple, and as much in Matthew's gospel, not least, about the upcoming destruction of the temple. So the salt saying is both vocation and warning. And once we take it that Jesus is then to be applying this to his followers, then we, his followers, we readers of Matthew's gospel, not just first century Jews, but every generation thereafter, have to take it to ourselves that we, Jesus' followers, are supposed now to be the salt of the earth. Many Christians in our own day have taken this very seriously. It's not enough to say, I'm a Christian, I'm going to keep myself away from the world lest I get contaminated. Well, of course, the world is going to be in a mess if we are not being salt and light in that world. And so the vocation, which many Christians now happily embrace, comes to us from ancient Israel via Jesus and his death and resurrection and in the power of the Spirit that we are now the people who are to be silent signs of hope in the world, signs of refreshment, signs of the preservation of all that is good, signs pointing ahead to the time when God will make all things new. 
And so we pray, gracious Lord, this vocation to be salt and light in your world is both challenging and in some ways frightening because we don't know where it's going to lead us. We pray therefore for your wisdom that you will show us where we can make a difference, both in our own immediate lives and working through the church in your wider world. We pray in Jesus' name and to his glory. Amen. How is this passage speaking to you? Let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe or check out our other videos.